Hey there guys, the Network Berg here, hope you're doing well. So, welcome to the channel if you're a new viewer, and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back, happy to see you again. So, in this video, we will be looking at how to configure BGP on a PFSense firewall. This will be a very basic configuration example. We'll just be setting up a peer, we'll be learning a default route from our peer, and we'll be advertising a subnet out to our peer. So, quick and easy lab, but it should be something fun. If you do want more information on BGP, I will link additional videos so that I've covered BGP on using something for my critic, but BGP is a standard, it's a protocol. It's something that is kind of working the same on most devices. So you can take that knowledge of how BGP works and the route selection process works and apply this to PFSense as well. Anyways, let's get into the video. Alrighty, so I'm logged onto my PFSense firewall where we will be configuring the BGP from, but let's just think of some great use cases when it comes to BGP. Some things that I can think of that this can be very useful for is if you maybe have some firewalls hosted in the data center and you want to very quickly just learn routes from whatever your um, upstream or not, let's not say your upstream, maybe your MPLS network is going to advertise to you and you don't want to statically enter all of the routes the whole time. BGP can be great for that because then you can automatically be learning the routes that's being advertised to you. You could essentially do the same stuff with OSPF, but there's some stuff that I prefer using BGP for when it comes to learning routes that's at the edge of the network because OSPF excels more for learning routes across the whole network in your own autonomous system where BGP is great for like learning those routes on the edges and just figuring out how to break out to different networks and such. So BGP is a great protocol for that. Another thing that I can see why, where you can use this effectively is if you were going to maybe use PFSense firewalls for your customer premises equipment or your CPEs. So you're actually putting a PFSense down at the customer's premises instead of like a little marketing or something because you want them to have some form of more basic and advanced fun firewall functionality. Then you put down the PFSense. And then what you could do is with this PFSense firewall, you could be establishing this BGP peer back to your own ISP network, and you could be learning routes from the CP or advertising routes. There's all kinds of practical and awesome uses for this. Now let's discuss some of the requirements to run BGP on your firewall. One thing, it's not natively on the PFSense firewall. You actually need to install an additional package. So something to take note of. And I'm also going to say that this isn't really made for internet route learning. You can do it, obviously, but smaller PFSense might have a issue if you're trying to learn a whole routing table of the internet, which is hundreds of thousands of routes, and maybe you have some hardware limitation, maybe you've only got one gig of memory, then you're going to run into some serious issues. So I really think this more excels in the data center or at the customer edge, but you can, if you have the sizing for it correctly, you can use it for internet learning routes. You, you could put this at an internet exchange and then form a BGP peer with an upstream uh, provider that way, and then you could learn all of the internet routes. So I'd actually rather prefer a router to perform that function since it's designed for that, but you could potentially do it with your PFSense as well. Now let's actually get on with the setup. So first things first, you are going to have to download the FRR package and I'm going into my package manager. I've already downloaded the package, but in essence, you could go into your available packages. You can search here BGP or FRR or whatnot, and it should come back with the FRR package like I have in my installed packages. And this FRR package is a suite of different protocols. So it's not just BGP you get, you get OSPF. It says you get OSPF6, which is just OSPF v3. So it's for IPv6 and you also get BFD using this. So this is actually quite nice. There's a whole bunch of different protocols that you're enabling your PFSense to use. Now, this is just step one. You get the package. Once you have it, you can go to your services and then you'll see a bunch of FRR tabs that are available here. So first thing is I recommend going into the global configuration because you are going to have to enable FRR. This is disabled by default. If it's not enabled, even though you set up all the BGP stuff, it's just not going to work. So make sure you enable FRR, and then you can set some details. You can set a default router ID, which is globally going to be used by all of the routing protocols, but I'm just going to leave it blank. You can set a master password. So I've made mine TMB123, but you can make it ABC123 or whatever you want. You can be, make it a complex password if you like, but this is just for your 
A4R system. And that's really all that we're going to do here. I'm going to save this. Make sure you click on save. If you don't, then this is going to stay disabled. And no matter what you do, BGP will not run. Next step is actually going into the BGP tab. And from the BGP tab, we also need to enable the BGP routing. So there's two things we're enabling, the whole FRR suite. And then we say, okay, we want to actually enable BGP as well. And then there's some additional settings you can tweak. We can say, hey, we want to log adjacency changes, which is useful for troubleshooting purposes. If you see a neighbor keeps dropping or issues are happening, you can tick this just to kind of get a read from the system logs why that might be dropping. If there's some issue, maybe some misconfiguration. And then we can set stuff like a local AS. Now that is very important with BGP because you need to tell your peer what your autonomous system is. So if you're peering using the same autonomous system, that's obviously IBGP. And if you're going to use eBGP where you have your own AS and your buddy has their own AS, then you need to give them what your AS is. And this is where we can set that. So in my example, it is 65200 is my AS of the PF sense. I can specify my router ID here. So if you set the router ID in the global settings and you leave this blank, it will use whatever router ID you put in the global settings. But I'm just going to specify mine here as 164.0.2, which is an IP address that's bound to my WAN interface. Now we can set some timers as well, but similarly as to IPsec, if there's some mismatch, then the protocol just doesn't talk right. So I'm just going to leave this blank in all of these fields, but this is quite nice if you want to maybe have some certain uh, functionality, because if you bring the whole time down, like, let's say to like a minute, then it's going to take a minute to reconverge the network in case there's some big drop that happens, but just something to be aware of. I'm going to scroll down and next big important thing that I actually want to talk about is the network distribution, because this is where you're going to advertise your routes out. Then there's two ways you can advertise routes out. You can either redistribute them, which means you're telling the protocol, hey, I want you to advertise all of my local routes or my connected routes, or if you want to redistribute OSPF routes, this is where you can do it. Um, and the thing that I actually recommend you do is you, you need to maybe just specify exactly what networks you want to send out. So in my case, I want to actually advertise out my LAN network, even though you might not typically do this for an internet type of setup, but let's say this is going to go to an ISP network and the, there's a customer with a VRF and all kinds of stuff. You want that VRF in the cloud to be aware of what this private subnet is that's at the CPE now. So this is where we can do that. I can say, hey, I want to make you aware that you can get to this LAN subnet because this is what I want to distribute out and it will then be broadcasted or advertised out using BGP. If you want to add additional subnets, it's as simple as clicking on this add button and then you can add whatever additional subnets you'd like to. Um, I think I have like a 10100/24 range on here as well. So let's also just advertise that out just for fun. And then I'm going to click on the save button. Now we've actually got the BGP configured relating to our router or our PF sense, our firewall. Um, next big step is actually setting up our neighbors. But before we actually set up a neighbor, there is a small quirk with the PF sense because by default, any routes will be dropped by the firewall, let's say policies. So you need to either set up a prefix list or a route map to allow the prefixes that you want to learn or advertise. So to do that, we can just head back into the global settings quickly and we can go to either prefix list or route maps. I recommend route maps, um, even though it's pretty advanced, all of the stuff you can do, just setting up a basic route map like this is really easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a new route map and I can give it a name. So I can just make this maybe access all. So I, I learn all routes, I'm allowing all routes um, I'm just going to call this match any, or the description will be match any route action, but this is where it's important. We need to say we permit these routes and then the sequence, I'm just going to set that as 100. Now, like firewalls work, they work in sequences. So this is just a sequence as to what priority this route is going to take that we're implementing here, this route map. Now I'm just going to scroll down. As you can see, there's a ton of options you can tweak, and this is really more of the advanced type of stuff that you can do with BGP and why route maps are so cool. But we're just setting all of these basic settings to allow all of the routes that we are going to learn. So I'm just going to save this. And now we have a route map called access all. 
great. Now we can go back to actually setting up our neighbors. So let me go back to BGP. Let me go into my neighbors, click on the plus, and now we can set a name slash address. Now don't be misled by that because that name, it's not just a descriptive name. This is actually what you're going to be connecting to. So if you're using peer groups, you could use that peer group's name to connect to, and then it's like a bunch of different routers you're going to be establishing this BGP peers with. But we're just going to be connecting to a single peer, so I'm just going to use that peer's IP address. And in my case, that is 164.0.1. Description, it's good to be descriptive. I'm just going to call this internet because I'm going to learn a default route out from my BGP peer. And my peer group, I'm going to leave blank. Password, I'm going to leave blank as well. But you can set that if you want to. Um, just note that there is some finicky stuff with the passwords if you set them. It is typically MD5. Um, but I think if you're going to set a password, just change this to be FRR on set key bidirectional. But for our demonstration purposes, we're going to leave that blank. We're going to scroll down. And our basic options, this is where it gets very important. You need to make sure that you put in the correct remote AS, so your friend's autonomous system number. And in my example, that is 65000. We can set an update source. We can set stuff with the address families. And here we can set default originate. Now, I'm not going to set a default originate because I don't want to advertise a default route out to my ISP's network because they're going to be very cross with me if I do this. But if they were smart, they would also have a route map or a prefix list that would be blocking that type of advertisement from happening. But the option is there, especially if you maybe want to advertise a default route out to some of your DMZs or something. This might be great for that type of functionality. Now, here we can also set the timers. Now, I'm not going to set any timers for this peer. And with the peer filtering, this is where it's important. This is where we create or why we created that route map. If you leave this blank, you're not going to be learning those routes. So let's just select the route map we created, the access all. I'll scroll down. We can set BFD, but I know BFD doesn't really work on Microtech version 7. So I'm going to leave this blank. Scroll down. And all of the advanced options, there's a ton of things here. And we will try and maybe cover more of this with PFSense. I'm just trying to show you configuring BGP at its core and how easy it is to actually just get basic functionality working. So I'm going to save this. And now that that's been saved, we can actually confirm and see if the BGP peer is up by heading to the status tab. And then from status, you can navigate to BGP again, because that's the status for BGP, or I can just use all and I'll be able to see some stuff here. Now, what I like is I can already see this first route I'm learning is via BGP. So that's great. And if I scroll down, We'll see stuff like BGP summary. So it will tell you how many neighbors you have, how many update messages are being sent and received. So this is fantastic. And here we can see how many prefixes we've received and how many prefixes we've sent. So that's also quite nice. Now, let me go down a little bit. Uh, this is just some more detailed information about the neighbors, so nothing too serious. But I'd like to just show you again, there's our default route out to get to the internet. Now, I already have gateway set on this firewall to break out to the internet. So let's break that. I'm going to go into my routing and I'm going to disable this primary gateway quickly. And I'm also just going to turn off this default gateway IPv4. So now technically I don't have any way to get out to the internet. However, I am learning a default route from my BGP peer. So I should still be able to get internet access because of this BGP route that I'm learning. So let's just see if that is actually the case. So first things first, let me just head back and see what the routing table looks like again now. So let's go into that status tab in FRR. And before there was a K route here, which was for the kernel route, which was that default gateway that was set. And that's gone now because we've disabled it. We've gotten rid of it. But I can see there is an active route out to the internet using BGP. So let's see if this actually works by first just checking from the firewall. Can we ping out? So let's try something basic. Can I ping? Google's DNS server, and that I can ping. And let's see from my Ubuntu Linux desktop, can I get out? And I can still get out to the internet. And this is because of the BGP configuration. Now, I'd also just quickly like to log on to that MicroTik so that I can show you that I am advertising routes out from the PFSense to my peer, to my neighbor. Now, I'm not going to be showing you how to set up BGP on MicroTik because that, that will be in the videos that I've linked. 
but this is just to kind of show you if you were peering with somebody else, what they would be seeing. So if I go into my IP and my routes, I should actually see that I am learning some BGP routes, which is perfect. And also if I go into my routing BGP and I look at my sessions, I should see I have a single session and this is perfect. So BGP is working. I am learning prefixes from my BGP neighbor or my peer. And I'm also advertising a default originate down to my neighbor so that they actually get internet access. Alrighty, so this covers a basic BGP configuration between PFSense and a microtech, but it doesn't have to be a microtech. It could be whatever other device, another PFSense. It's just to show you how to perform a basic BGP setup. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'd like to thank my Patreon and YouTube members for helping support the channel. And obviously I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for watching this video. Please feel free to leave any messages that you'd maybe like to see some other type of content and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.